right, welcome back to the Grinders Challenge. This is episode number seven. Currently, my record is three wins, one loss, zero draws. I built up a bankroll of $1,070, and we're gonna climb from here. I am finally in the green zone. The purpose of the Grinders Challenge is to put you through a free roll, win that cash, take that cash to the casino, where it's legal to play, you take that money, you double it up, you go home. Then you go back and you double it up again and you go home. And you build a bankroll until you get to a certain platform that you can level up to a new game. We start off with the lowest stakes when we win that free roll. Today we're going to talk about employment. So, can you make poker your job? Technically, yes. But you have a long way to go. I've done it. And here's what you have to do. If you've ever paid attention to any of my content in the past, you have noticed that I trash free rolls. And there is a very legitimate reason to why I do that. A free roll is poker practice. You got that? It's poker practice. The reason you're addicted to free rolls is because you get to play poker, you get to go through wins, losses, and big achievements and hit your reward system and you don't have any investment, and you make some cash sometimes, but you're grinding it out for like a hundred bucks, maybe, if you don't have to chop and tip the dealer. Free rolls suck. It's fun, but it's a business designed to keep you coming to them. But if you're a poker player, it's poker practice. It's a free place where you can go and sit down and have no investment. Learn how to play if you've never played. Go home in on your skills if there's some things that you want to try out that you would never do when there's money on the line. Or if there's like some cool sports game on and you're just bored on the weekend and you just want to go hang out, have some drinks, throw some cards around and just, just to play a board game in public with some friends and some drinks, right? That is the purpose of what a free roll is. So if you think about it in employment terms, it's training. It's poker training. When you get up into the 1-2 world, or the lowest stakes that you can find, that's where you can start making this a part-time job. I'm currently using this as a part-time job. And honestly, it's one of the most ultimate part-time jobs you could ever have, because you need to put in 20 hours a week, right? To have a part-time job, or a maximum of, right? So, uh, if I go to focus and play four hours at a time, that means I should be playing five nights a week. But I don't want to do that. I only want to work one to two nights a week. So I'll go play anywhere between four to eight hours once or twice a week. And as you can see by how much I'm averaging per night, it definitely works itself out. Because if you go get a part-time job somewhere, I mean, what are you hoping that you make 20 bucks an hour somewhere? I mean, for good part-time jobs that can only pay you sometimes 25 to 35 bucks an hour, which is, you know, it's pretty decent for a part-time job. But, I mean, that, you can't find that that often, right? And then you have to sacrifice other times to go work that part-time job. In poker, when you're building from nothing, you can literally go play Friday nights, Saturday nights, and you're at the casino where it's a cool place to be. And, uh, yeah, you can promote yourself. I can technically promote myself right now. That's why I'm wearing my suit and tie right now. Um, you can't tell, but I'm actually in some shorts. But that's part of the program, right? But my point is, is that you can actually treat this like a job. And that's kind of what the purpose of the Grinders Challenge is. It's to put you on a professional structure. Because all you have to do to become a professional poker player is keep record of what you make. Keep record of your wins and losses and the hours. It's just statistics. And if you are winning, you're a winning professional poker player. That's all that it is. Now, are you a pro? No. Two different things. You can be a professional poker player. And you can be a pro. Two different things. Let's take myself, for instance, right? Obviously, professional poker player. But am I a pro? No. I'm not a pro. Can I hang with the pros? Probably. I've only played one. But this is when I wasn't 
really that in tune with poker. I just was playing premium hands only. And uh, I did pretty well against him. I made him buy in three times, and he congratulated me at the end. I didn't know who he was. And later on, he ended up being on TV a lot. Uh, Phil got fun. But other than that, I mean, for like a regular pro, let's just be honest. I could hold my weight, but they have strategies that you would never even think of. I have strategies that you can't think of right now. A lot. They have strategies you'll never be able to come up with. They've been doing this at the highest stakes. I mean, these dudes are betting $150,000 like it's nothing. Come on, let's be realistic. Like, have you ever done that? I haven't. That's what a pro is. I mean, when you're a pro, you're just like, you're on TV and you're playing for like that kind of money. That's when you're like a pro. So, in fact, I even narrow it down to being on TV. I think you're a pro when you're on TV. That's when you're a pro. You can be a professional poker player, a technical one. It is what it is. You're keeping record. I'm I'm training you literally how to be a professional poker player. That's what this is all about. So this is a great thing for you to do if you follow my structure, if you keep your own way of playing as well. You need to adapt the two, right? So you don't need to just pick up on everything that I do, but the things that I'm teaching you are very important things. And as a matter of fact, I think that if you're a poker player and you listen to anything that I have to say, you already know this stuff. I'm kind of just drilling this back in because a lot of times you just need to hear it again. You need to hear this kind of this kind of rhetoric over and over again because you have to drill it back down. When you start playing poker with the same people too often, you start becoming too much of a social poker player. You're friends, you lose your edge, you're not a shark anymore. You're still a good poker player, but you're afraid to like really get out there and just like attack and just do your thing and be the best poker player you can be because you're playing with friends, you're casual, you're chilling. Uh, that's why I designed this. The Grinders Challenge is literally designed and all of these lessons that are going to be coming up as well, they're, it's literally designed for you to follow this, this process step by step, step by step. And it doesn't matter what situation you're in. You can get your edge all the way back. So, yes, this can be a full-time job. I've done it. I will say that it's really cool in some ways where you can make a lot of money in like a little bit amount of time. But the rest of the week, it sucks because during the daytime... All your friends are at work, all your family at work, and you're just hanging out. You've made a thousand, couple thousand on the weekend, maybe. And, you know, I don't need to go to work this week. I do this every weekend. It's when you climb higher and you get disciplined, it's not that hard to do, especially when you play on nights like Friday and Saturday when it's just a bunch of people at the casino. It's like, hey, I think I'll try out poker tonight. That's why you go, when you're building your bankroll, you go and play those nights. Sometimes Thursdays too, I would say, because people get paid on Thursdays and they take their check up there. But even then, the people who are like taking their check up there, they're still trying to win, right? But the people who are there like particularly on Saturday nights, a lot of them are like, I think I'll go try poker. Or my wife likes to play slots and gamble. I'll just go sit at the poker table and just donk off. A lot, there are more people on Saturday nights that don't care. As you can tell by the amount that I'm winning, if I took if I took this game that I'm doing right now and I played on a Tuesday night, it would be like the night that I lost the first time. It would be very tough because those people play for a living, right? That's what they do. And if they don't, they try to make it a part-time job also. So you're playing against way more serious poker players at those points. So the point that I'm trying to make is that can you make this a job? Yes. Do you really want to? You need to figure that out for yourself. Is this a skill that you should probably try to sharpen and develop and do on your free time? I mean, why not? I've been doing this for 15 years. And looking back on the past, there are some things that I kind of regret. I kind of wish I would have like put my energy in like somewhere else so I could have more of a social life like back in my 20s. Because these free roll leagues were so much fun back in those days. They were just wild and crazy and everybody was having a good time. And it was before like identity politics and all that crap really kicked in. Everything was like great. So back then it was still a whole lot of fun. It was more social and you could still really try to beat each other. And it wasn't that big of a deal. But things have definitely changed over the past decade. So it's a little bit tougher now to really be hardcore at the table because everybody's so offended all the time. I mean, obviously that's dying down. It's kind of going away, but we're still climbing out of that hole. Um, but if I were to look back and like what I have 
done this again. I can't say that I wouldn't have because it was also a lot of fun, right? But I do kind of wish that I would have spent more time socializing with like outside friends. But poker has taught me so much about real life because you sit down and play against every type of person you could ever imagine. I mean, literally. And they're going to beat you. You're going to beat them. It's any man's game. And it has increased my skill so well that I can pick something up like this that I haven't done in a few years and already hit the ground running, hit get the tires rolling, right? So I can go technically sit down and go make some money no matter what. It's a skill I've developed. It's like with the cameras, right? I can literally take a break from the cameras and go pick it up another day and go shoot something really well, even video, because the settings are ingrained in my head. I just know how to click it and look at it. Yep, and frame it right, boom. Film, picture, whatever. It's all the same thing. I can literally go do a headshot anytime I want to. I don't have to go make a living off of doing headshots. I don't have to make a living off of doing poker. I can literally go sit down and make some money anytime that I want to. It's harder to comprehend if you haven't climbed to that level, but that's what this structure is designed for. Like even if I wouldn't have made it past this free roll the first time, right? If I would have lost my buy-in and gone back into the free roll world, I would have had to just reset my record. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. Once you just get it going the first time, it gets going and it doesn't stop. That's why I'm so happy about hitting my $1,000 mark. Because me personally, I just need five buy-ins for any level that I play in. Okay, I'm not going to say any level. Because when you get higher up in the stakes, which I've mentioned before, this when you start playing against better people, you need a bigger bankroll. Because you're going to have to invest money to understand, to get somebody to reveal their cards, to understand exactly how they're playing. So like even now, right, a lot of the times I'll go through 25% or maybe even up to 50% of my stack of the $200 just to see the, enough cards to get a grip on how people are playing. It's just like a business. So it is kind of like employment as well. You have to spend a little bit of money to get the, the revelations of what, what they're doing. And then you collect information and then you can start building. And then you just fight your way back for the stack. It's the same way when you play those bigger games too. I mean, if you've got like, you know, 10 grand in front of you, you're going to go through like $2,500 of that just figuring the table out. And that's going to be scary at first, right? $2,500 is gone. I just put $10,000 on the table. Now $2,000, $3,000 and it's gone. You're going to start sweating. You're going to get ready to get up. You can't just go jump into a game like that. I mean, you can, you can get lucky, but now they're hoping you're basically like the dudes at the casino that you're hoping are going to be at the casino that night when you're playing low stakes. It's all the same thing. And I'll get more into the bankroll stuff later, obviously, but that's kind of a hint. You're going to need to spend money to see where you're at. And tonight's going to be a good, a good example of that, right? Because what do I usually do? I usually take my money, all that cash, and I just take my, let's try it again. I'll never be able to do that again. My 200 bucks, right? But I'm not going to do that tonight. Tonight, because I have five buy-ins, and I because of my window loss chances, I'm going to take a second one, right? I'm going to take 400 with me. As a matter of fact, I take that back. I'm going to leave one of those here. I'm going to be even more conservative. I'm going to take 300 with me. Because if I have to go spend 50% of my stack to understand the table... I don't want to play with $100 out of my 200 if I have to spend this much to get information. Now I'm stuck with a stack, right? That kind of is stupid. Now I've got a grip and I understand, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, dang, now I'm ready to play and I can capitalize. I don't want to make 100 bucks off of you. I want to make 200 bucks off of you. So I am going to take one extra $100 with me tonight in case I need to top off after I've lost, if I've lost 100, right? I'm not predicting this is going to happen. Hopefully it won't. Um, cause I'm pretty in tune. I don't really, I can read people so well now. I really don't need to invest like that anymore, particularly in these low stakes and the higher stakes I will. And I'll, I'll show you when I go through that. So I'm, because it's Saturday night and it could be crazy. I'm going to take an extra top off because I'm not going to go wild and just go all in. If it's one of those crazy nights, then I'm going to shoot myself in the foot by not having a second buy-in. But what do we always talk about? You bring one buy-in with you, right? Because if you lose tonight, you're going to want to go get your money back. You're going to buy in again and go through your whole bankroll. No. Sometimes you need to just take the L. Lose the, lose the buy-in. Come back the next time. Now, can you sit there and get your money back that night? Yeah. But sometimes 
when you're building a bankroll and you only have five buy-ins, you don't do it. Because let's say I lose twice. It can happen. It's happened before. I've lost $800 in one night before. Now, I mean, it was to wild stuff. I had quads and he had a straight flush. I mean, yeah, I'm going to lose that. But, I mean, I'm also going to hit that bad beat jackpot if he's got the cards that I think he's got, which makes me have like $50,000. So, yeah, 800 sure, all in. You got it? Damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, the point that I'm making. I have uh, I have five buy-ins, right? If I do lose tonight, it's Saturday, could be wild. I go buy in again and it's still too wild. Statistically, I'm wrong. Now I'm down to three buy-ins and I'm in scary zone again. Now, I'm not going to lose three more buy-ins. I know that about myself, so I'm good. But I just don't I just don't want to do it. We're building our bankroll. I don't care about one, two. I don't care about one, three. I want to get up in two, five. I want to get up in five, ten. I don't care about these stakes enough to go, like, get mad that I lost tonight, right? One buy-in, one top-off in case this falls down. That was not supposed to happen. That's on the floor. Okay, so that's my strategy for tonight. That is a good lesson for you to learn. So can this become a job? Yes. Do you want to make it one? You need to think about that. Now, can it just be a part-time thing that you should do whatever you want to? Absolutely. Why not? Look, okay, so I'm never, I can't say I'm never going to cash this account out that I do with this Grinders Challenge, but my goal is to just build it forever and not to touch it. Like, typically, I will do this like in a one-year thing, right? The last time I did the Grinders Challenge, I got 93 wins, 5 losses, and 13 draws. So I played 111 days, I think, in one year. So I did it for one year. And, you know, I just sat on the cash. I got a job and did some other stuff. And then it all just went away. I quit playing. Life gets expensive. You pay for a car. You do all kinds of stuff. And then the money's gone. So you can use the money for whatever you want to. But if you don't keep doing it, you don't build more and climb higher. If I never touch the Grinders Challenge money in this envelope, it always increases. Every time. So if I hit $3,000, I can go play one three and buy in for 300 and bring 500 with me or 400, whatever. And then when I hit $5,000, I can bring 500 to 1,000 with me, whatever I decide to do that day. Because I have a certain amount of buy-ins, right? I climb higher and higher and higher. So let's just say that I stick to one two and one three all year. If I'm making $1,000 every four games, that's $250 a game, right? So if I play, that's once a month. $1,000 a month, that's $12,000 a year. Um, so, okay, well, I did it in three games, right? I lost one. But in three games, I, I'm averaging, okay, I'm averaging like 358 There were two, 275 a game or whatever it is. I mean, I'm on track at this low stake if I never promoted myself. I'm on track to make anywhere between $12,000 to $18,000 a year. That's cash. Now, you'll have to pay taxes on that. We'll get to that later. That's going to suck because it's 30%. But you can write off other things like the gas and the buy-ins. and Or not the buy-ins, but the... Uh, like at Texas Card House, you can write off the seat, how much that the rental is, how much the daily entry fee. So the things that you can never usually keep track of, like the rake, now you'll be able to because you can just keep track of the hours. So you can write things off this time. And that's a totally different ballgame. Hotel rooms... You know, so you'll get to that point and that part's going to be cool. But what if you just never touch it? And that's what I'm going to show you how to do this time. My goal, I guess, will be $18,000 this year and, you know, just playing whenever, whenever I feel like it. I was supposed to play back to back last week. I didn't do it because I don't know. I mean, we just got engaged. It was our anniversary. I just love my girl. I want to spend some time with her, you know, and I was, I was tired. It was that tired time where I was like, should I push myself out the store? But I'm not going to do it. Anyway, my point is, I'm going to go over a year this time. This Grinders Challenge is going to last for more than one year. I'm not going to reset it. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to dip into the account and buy something related. I'm already thinking about something just to increase the content. But I also could use that equipment for something with my, my production company. So I might just buy it with my production company money. Um, we'll get into that later. But specifically, I want it because of poker. And I think it would be really cool. And I think y'all will really enjoy it. So I'm kind of debating which route I want to go with that. We'll figure that out. 
But anyway, so the point that I'm making is that, uh, yeah, you can make this a part-time job. Should you? That's up to you. Do you really want to? That's up to you. But a free roll is poker practice. You know it already. Get in your head. Get out of the free roll world. Go make some real money. You'll feel better about yourself. It's fun. Go socialize. Get that out of your system and go play hardcore. Okay? Get out of the free roll world. Go play some for some real cash. You can do it. It's not that hard. You just have to get used to it. Don't be scared. All right. So, a thousand bucks on the bankroll. One one thousand seventy dollars. We're headed to the casino. This is episode number seven today. All about employment. Mm mm mm. Crispy. All right. Wish me luck, and uh, we'll follow up with some new tips. I've got a whole bunch of them for you. I've got tips all the way through episode number 20 already. So, let's go. good night you know i really didn't even play that long i made my money within like two hours um so i mean oh pretty awesome uh so i made what 387 dollars i got there pretty late i got there around 8 15 8 30 sat down immediately um and i am up 387 for the night so that puts my bankroll at 1457 dollars I'm so close to halfway to my next level goal. So, pretty awesome. Um, last night, I got a set of threes against a very aggressive player. She was sitting all the way across. I got the seven seat again. She was in seat two. She was extremely aggressive. I think she came from a two five table and she was just pumping money. So she was she raised at like 23 bucks, but she was doing it consistently. So I kind of caught her on a time where she was just doing it for the consistency of it and I had pocket threes in you know rate in a one two game raising it up to like 23 buck 22 23 bucks whatever it was it was a pretty steep call for pocket threes I mean it's a really low pair but I felt pretty confident against her I'm like I've had a lot of pocket pair and I haven't had a set in a long time so I'm like I don't know I just kind of feel it and boom right in the window is a three I think the flop was like three two nine or something and she kept leading on. She bet heavier. Uh, I can't remember the numbers exactly. She went to, I believe she went to 40. I called. Uh, and then she made it like 60 the next time. And I re-raised her. And then she re-raised me and I went all in. And she called. Because she was just, she was loose. So I doubled up right there. And then later on, I got pocket twos. And I'm like, there were two black twos. And I was like, this feels kind of good. Uh, you know, the threes, they hit. I'm... I don't, I don't feel like insecure about this at all. Boom. Quads on the flop. I'm like, no way against her again. And she's still going crazy. So I guess because she's coming from those higher stakes, coming down to the lower stakes, they think they can just like run you over because they're playing, you know, you can buy in for up to a thousand dollars at Winstar in a two, five game. Right. So, you know, they're coming down here where everybody's got 200 bucks. So yeah, you can just run people over with your money. It's that's poker right 
Wrong one though. So yeah, I flopped quads and I doubled up through her again. So she is responsible for all of my money last night. I thank you very much, ma'am. Um, I would love to see you again. You're amazing. Uh, but yeah, she calmed down after that. After I, I stacked her twice, she, uh, yeah, she was like, oh God. She didn't go all in this time, so I couldn't double up through her because she had more cash. But I got another, what, two, almost 200 bucks off of her just through the quads. This time when I re-raised re her, she, uh, she only called. She didn't like push anymore. She's like, okay, you got me last time. What are you doing again? And boom, I had quads. She's like, nice. <laughs> so anyway, cool. Win number four. I'm almost halfway to my next level. Um, so let's finish this off with the last discussion of employment. We're gonna keep this very intelligent, and we're gonna we're gonna nail this in the we're gonna nail this down. Okay, so you want to do this for a living eventually, maybe now, whatever, right? Let's say that you want to replace your job with this. Um, replacing your job is gonna require you to match your salary. Let's just throw an easy number to to do math with, right? Fifty thousand dollars. Let's say you need a job that pays $50,000 a year. So that's $25 an hour, right? So we're just going to keep it simple numbers. If you want to make $25 an hour, then you need to work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. So that's $200 a day to make $50,000, right? Plus the $2,000 or whatever. So $52,000. But we're, we're just going to keep it simple, simple math. So you need to make $200 a day to have a full-time job. So that means you need to buy in for, if you're going to buy in for $200, you need to make at least a double up every single day. That's improbable. I mean, look at me even. I, I lost and I don't lose in these levels because it's it's not that difficult. You know, the, the more advanced players are like further up down the ladder. So to make $200 every single day, I mean, you're playing five days a week. That puts you on a schedule of playing like, for instance, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. That's eight hours. And you're hoping to make $200 every time. But you're probably going to lose, you know, one out of those five times. So now you're down to $800 a day. Sometimes you'll make more. Sometimes you'll make less. Sometimes you'll just be flat out draws. And th those are going to come during Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So with these lower stakes, for the most part on the throughout the course of the entire year, um, it's not going to be feasible for you to try to make $50,000 in lower stakes. So you're not going to be able to make this a full-time job until you climb the ladder. You can make this a part-time job and you can do that when you get into one too. So just think about it this way, right? So we talked about the free role being your poker practice, your training session, an internship. This is where you get to go intern to see if you can actually go higher. And when you get, when you play free rolls, this is going to, this is going to be for any level, for any level. I'm just going to use the free roll as an example. When you get so sick of playing the free rolls that you're literally just having fun, but you're like, I'm not getting anything out of this anymore. You're burnt out. You're burnt to a crisp. Now you're just here having drinks and you don't care. That's when you need to promote yourself, level up. It's like you need to leave the job that you're at because you hate the job, but you're just there because you just need the money and like you're just burnt to a crisp and just, you're, you're not fulfilled. You have no purpose. You're just there because whatever, just give up, right? That's where you have to push yourself to go to another level. And that's going to be the same thing with every level from now on also. So when you go into the one, two world, this is why the ground grinders challenge is designed. So this gives you an incentive to go you know, now I'm going to go win a free roll and I'm not going to touch that cash. Now I'm going to go into the one, two world. Now you're going into the world where you're trying to get a part-time job. If you go get a part-time job somewhere, you're hoping that you get like, you know, a 15 hour dollar an hour job, maybe even a $35 an hour job because some of those jobs where you can do contract stuff, you know, they have like up to 20 hours a week worth of work, but that's where they get capped out because of small companies or whatever, right? So how much do you need to make per night to do a part-time job? You know, you're probably hoping to make an extra hundred bucks a night, but I know plenty of people that are down for like, if I just make an extra 50 bucks tonight, I'm okay for that too. A lot of people go work for four hours, four, four to six hour shifts for a part-time job and they'll make, you know, 15 bucks an hour. So if that's 
15 times four is 60, you know? So I'm, a lot of people are okay with making an extra 60 bucks a night. So if you go put that into poker instead of that kind of a job and you follow the strategies and you just play correctly in the same amount of time, you can make quadruple that consistently. So this is why poker is a great opportunity to be a part-time job. If you learn it, take it seriously and get some training, which I'm here to do as well. I'm, I'm not going to get into the guts of the training stuff here. You're going to have to come be a part of my tournaments, which are my launch pad programs to give you a bankroll to get out of these areas and to climb. And I'll have training sessions specifically designed. There, it'll be a two tournament session, right? The one tournament will be the launch pad to get your $200 when you get first place. In the second tournament, we're going to go through a training session where I'm going to play against you. A table full of people, a whole room, whatever. But we're going to go through training sessions. It's going to be a completely different concept. You'll see. But the idea is to try to make this a part-time job, right? And that's what you can do with these lower stakes. A one, two, one, three. You can definitely make these full-time jobs, but you need to build a bankroll. So I'm halfway to my bankroll. I have... So I'm at that 1540, uh, 15, 14.57 mark. So now I have seven, seven buy-ins. So I still wouldn't even make this a part-time job at that point because even in one, two, I'm still not really where to, where I need to be unless I'm trying to make this professional. I need to hit the $2,000 mark. When I hit the $2,000 mark, that will put me in this structure into the green because then I have 10 buy-ins and that's how many buy-ins you need to play. If I had 10 buy-ins of one, two, then I can experiment. I can do all kinds of other things. I'm much, much more comfortable. Even with me, I'm, I'm more aggressive with my investments because I only need five buy-ins, right? Because I've played at such higher stakes on this, like these $200 buy-ins, they don't really mean anything to me. It's just more about building a bankroll, right? You'll get to this point too. So you need 10 buy-ins to really be comfortable and any professional will tell you this, right? So I need to reach the $2,000 mark. So $2,000 in the bankroll, you're going to be like, well, now I can go buy things. I'm, not, I'm much more comfortable and you're going to have to install more discipline because don't you want to make more? And this is where the, the part-time job comes in. But what you're going to need to realize is this part-time job that you're trying to create for yourself is also sort of becoming a business simultaneously. So you need to keep this in mind while you climb this ladder as well. So can you make this a part-time job? Absolutely. When you need to make this a full-time job, this is going to be when you have enough capital in the bank, right? So look at my bankroll, 1457. I've got a long way to go before I would personally like quit a job or whatever to go do this because I don't want to do that unless I have a year's worth of money saved up. Then I'm like, okay, because you need to be able to control your monthly income. If you're making 52,000 or $50,000 a year, like we're going to use for this example, that's a thousand dollars a week. You need to be making a thousand dollars a week just to break even. But you don't want to just break even because then you're, all you're doing is trying to float and keep your head above water. The idea for doing this is to promote yourself to grow. So you need to put yourself on the correct program if you want to scale and make or you want to use this as a job and do this as a business or whatever. So like at this level, if I played five nights a week and I just kept my consistency, right? I'm just going to use myself as an example then this $200 a day is the bare minimum that I would need to make five times a week to get my $1,000 a week to give my my $50,000 salary, right? But my living expenses, is, it's not going to help me out. I'm going to break even. I've got a mortgage. I've got a car note. I've got a cell phone. I've got groceries. I'm going to have a family. I'm not going to be able to do that off of $50,000. Now, is this great for a part-time thing? Absolutely. And when I get like up into one, three, right? So what I don't know about what I'm averaging right now, but $1,400 in five games. I mean, what's that? $300. I'm almost averaging 300 bucks a game right now. So if I'm averaging $300 a day, if I'm trying to make a $50,000 salary, I'm getting an additional $100 a day. 
but that's still not enough because I have to pay a lot of taxes when I do this. And you know, we're paying 30% taxes with this and that really sucks. So you're going to need to play higher, which is why I'm teaching you not to touch this money. It needs to grow because when those taxes hit, that's going to be 30%. Okay. $1,000 a week times 52 weeks, 52,000 weeks or 50, wow, 52,000 weeks. All right, that's the new goal, 52,000 weeks. Um, all right, so $52,000 a year, right? 30% of that is going to drop your income down to, what, $36,000 a year, right? So now your $52,000 is $36,000. Uh, now, one, two is not so pretty anymore, is it? Yeah, so $300 times five, it's $1,500 a week. That's looking better now that now and um, now we're up to six thousand dollars a month instead of four thousand dollars a month. So now we're at seventy two thousand dollars a year instead of fifty two thousand dollars a year. I just added on a twenty k, so that sixteen k that got taken off my taxes now I'm up four k. So now that I'm if I'm hitting three hundred dollars a day, which is the one three level, right? If you're making because if if you're buying for three hundred, all we're trying to do is double up while we build the bankroll. We're just focused on building a bankroll, whether it takes all year, two years, whatever. We're just building this bankroll over the course of time. So if I'm hitting $300 a day, five times a week, that's $72,000 a year, right? So now we're going to take that $20,000 off. Now I'm back down to $52,000 with my, with my 30% taxes. Now I'm cashing $1,000 a week after taxes. Now I'm actually living off of a $52,000 salary and things are more sustainable. But that's still not enough, is it? No, because $52,000 is like what you need to literally be like barely above poverty level these days. So that means you need to get out of 1-3. 1-3 is still a part-time job. 2-5. I'm just going to keep the casino rules here. I'm not going to use like the local ones because even a one, two, you can play for $500 at Texas card house. And uh, we'll get into that later because I want to start going there. So I don't have to drive nearly as far and we're going to, we're going to change things up when I get there, but we're going to keep, keep this consistency now because now I'll need $5,000 just to play one, two, because you can buy it in for 500 bucks there. And so technically, if I want to play two five, even at Winstar, you can buy up to a thousand now. It's not a five hundred dollar cap anymore. So a thousand dollars times ten, which means I need ten thousand dollars to go play two five. I'm a long way away. Man, that's what I'm five or I'm fifteen percent of the way there. So that's I got eighty five percent of a bankroll increase. I've got a or whatever. I need to increase my bankroll a lot. I need to hit $10,000 before we even go think about playing 2.5 now. That sucks. And in fact, at Texas Card House, I think the buy ins 1500 at 2.5. So that means I need $15,000 to go play 2.5. So if I'm planning to make twelve to $18,000 at these lower levels this year, I'm playing part time. It's not a full time job. I'm playing four hours, two nights a week. Right, maybe three, maybe three days. I might go on a Sunday, I might go on a Thursday. There's two to four days a week that I would play because I'm building a bankroll and I'm trying to play when I'm able to win. I'm not trying to be a pro yet. We're still down here in the lower stakes. So to be a two five player, I need fifteen thousand dollars. I got a long way to go. I think by the end of this year, I might be able to get promoted into a two five game. Now the rate that I am on, I might be able to get there faster. And I just need to hit the $10,000 mark to be able to play 2-5 at Winstar. So I'm on track to do that. What? So I've played five games and I'm at $1,500. So I need, what, $3,4500, $6,7500, 9000 So I need, what, 30? I need to be at 30, 30 games and I'm at five. I need 30 more games. I, my record needs to hit about 35 games. When I hit about 35 games, I should be able to get into the 2-5 world. And that is where you can begin to start to make this a full-time job. Not yet, though, but you're getting there, right? So let's get into 2-5. 
When you are able to play 2-5 consistently, not only do you have the bankroll, but your comprehension about the money is going to increase, and it's going to take a little bit of getting used to because you're betting for a lot more. You know, these $150 all-ins are now going to be $400, $500 all-ins. Sometimes $700 all-ins. Sometimes 1000 because you got 1000 but those days won't always be there. Just sometimes. So... It's getting tougher. 2-5 is going to be tougher. But let's just say that your goal is still to double up in 2-5, which is not impossible. If you keep these same strategies, which I'll get into the guts of this stuff like I'm doing right now, which is the reason I'm winning. Those guts, if you implement it all the way through any level, it will work. It'll just become more difficult the higher you go because there'll be more players as good as you with these types of strategies too. But it is very doable to double up in 2-5. You can double up in 5-10 even. But when you start hitting 10-25 in those levels, it's a different ball game. You can still do it, but it's much more difficult. So... Let's just say that you're going to be able to play 2-5. You're buying in for $1,000. You have $10,000 in the bankroll. Your goal is to make $1,000 a day now, right? You're going to play two days a week still. You're still going to play Fridays and you're still going to play Saturdays. Maybe Thursdays, maybe Sundays. We're not going to branch off. We're still doing this as a part-time job. When you're playing 2-5 and you're buying in for $1,000, you're going to be battling to win like 100 bucks at a time. That's the kind of the thing of 2-5. You know, like in 1-2, 1-3, you're making like $25 to $50 at a time. Excuse me, somewhere in that range, you're kind of like stealing those $25, $50 pots in those two ranges. When you get to 2-5, you're making like $75 to 100 bucks at a time. But you're also losing that at a time, so don't get too excited yet. So when you get into this this two five range, you're uh, you're trying to make a thousand dollars a day to keep building this bankroll to climb to the next level. It's all we care about is climbing the ladder. It's all this is about, right? So let's say that we're making a thousand dollars every night. We're playing Friday nights and Saturday nights. That's two thousand dollars a week. So at two thousand dollars a week times fifty two weeks, now we've hit what a hundred and four thousand dollars. Here comes the taxes. So at $100,000 and you're paying 30,000, 30% in taxes, you're taking home $70,000 in cash. Now, if we're living off of a $50,000 salary, now you're making an excess. Now you're making $20,000 to $18,000 in excess a year, right? So now you can start playing more often and with lower stakes. So we're going to take that you can if this is this is where you're going to have options once you get into the grinders the grinders challenge and these higher stakes. Once you start hitting 25 and you play for a year in that level and you've made your $104,000 and you've paid your taxes and you're down to 70, you're going to start taking that 20k or 18k whatever the amount is, you're going to take that extra and you're going to put it back into a lower stake or whatever you want to. Now you can just pick a different day, right? Um just think about it this way. Think of it as a second bankroll. It's still all the same thing. It's still going in the same purse, but we're going to divide it up as if it was like a second entity of your company. You're expanding your business. You're going to you're going to play an extra day, so your part-time job is going to increase, but this is also a business, so it needs to be both, right? So your business is now generated $104,000 because you're making $1,000 every day. We're playing two days. 52, or 52 times a year, right? So your $104,000 down to $70,000 for taxes minus the 20,000 for the 50 grand you're living off of to sustain your life. Now you've got a surplus of the 20 grand. So that 20 grand, save it, put it to the side. That $20,000 is now a new investment. What do you need to buy in for $20,000? 510. Oh, so now you can play 2-5 consistently and 5-10 whenever you want to because you have $20,000 and the buy-in for 5-10 is $2,000 plus. I don't think there's a cap anymore. It's one of those like gentleman's agreements where you can buy in for 70% of the big stack. 
So obviously things will change when you get up to the stake, but if you do this for consistently an entire year, if, it, if you play two five at $1,000 for an entire year and you generate $104,000 in income, you now have a two five bankroll and a five two bank, or and, wow, a two five bankroll and a five ten bankroll. Now you have two. They're still all the same thing, but they're two different entities. You're playing an extra day or extra two days. You can now make this a full-time job because now you have $70,000 in your bankroll. So if you need to leave your job and you want to pursue this a little bit better, you want to play more often because there's day games. Now you have the availability to do so because you have your $52,000 or your $50,000 your $1,000 a week, you're gonna still make that $1,000 every single time, right? But you're also making an extra $1,000. So now you have your surplus. And then you can take your $20,000 bankroll and go experiment with 510 and not touch your 2-5 bankroll, which is sustaining your life. You understand what I'm saying? So your $70,000 that you've made that you have not touched all year long, you can now play two different games. You have two businesses. You have a two five business and a five ten business. That's what that's what this is about. So that's how you make this a full time job. That's how you do it consistently without going bust, getting scared. And the other thing that you have to think about is is fifty thousand dollars really enough for you to live off of? When you start having this kind of cash, if you've never had money like that before, are you really going to be able to not touch it? That's going to be difficult. You're going to want to go on a vacation. Your car is going to break down. You're going to need a new vehicle. You're going to want to buy a house. You're going to want to get engaged. You're going to want to have kids. All these things change. So this is where you're going to have to gauge whether you can make this a full-time job or not and treat this as a business or not. It might take a few years, but look, poker players play forever. I've been playing for 15 years. That blows my mind. I remember when I hit the three year mark and I was like, golly, I've literally played poker for three years. This is crazy. I'm at 15 years. That doesn't even make sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm setting the example. I've got a little bit of a, of, of a speed bump ahead or not speed bump, but I'm a little ahead of the curve than you, but just follow my lead. I've got, you know, well, there's 20 of us in the group that are doing this for now. So just stick to the program. I will mentor you the whole way. I will make you not spend your money. I'll do whatever. It's not, a, I love my brand. It's not about the brand. It is about making you a professional poker player. So this is where we're at. Yeah. And uh, let's, last thing, 510, right? If you're playing 510 and you're buying in for $2,000, what is your goal? To double up, right? You want to make $2,000. It's going to be difficult. You're probably looking at $1,200 to 1500 today. Because getting to that $2,000, you're going to have to really fight for it. Consistently, I mean. Consistently. You can have $10,000 nights easy in these games. Like, you can do it, but you're going to take a lot of hits. This game is different. It's heavier. And you're not going to be used to those numbers. You're going to have to get to the point psychologically to where you take the dollar sign off of the chips, like literally delete the dollar sign out of your head and treat it as like a number on a chip, like a tournament, right? If you play it that way and you're not scared of the money, that's, that's what you need to do when you get into the higher stakes. So if you have your two, five bankroll, you're still making a thousand dollars a week, maybe $2,000 a week. Now you're playing five, 10 also on whatever nights. You can move your 2-5 night to a Thursday night where a lot of people go play 2-5 on Thursdays because that's when they get paid. Now move your 2-5 on Saturday to Thursday. Put your 5-10 on Saturday. Bam. Now you're making $4,000 a week. Is $4,000 a week good for you? That's $16,000 a month. You know what I mean? So now you're hitting like, what, $180,000 a year? I mean, then taxes, so you're taking, what, 50 grand off of that? But you're still, you're making 130 grand cash. That's how you do it. It's not always going to be consistent. But if you don't focus on gambling, you just take the, the seriousness, and you apply the guts that I'll be teaching you, you can do it consistently. Watch me. I'll lead the way. We can all do this. So that's what this is about. You are not only creating a part-time or for a full-time job for yourself, it's a business. 
you can write off expenses, you can create an LLC, a DBA, whatever, it's all the same. You treat it that way. But if you're gonna create a business, you're creating a job anyway, it's the same thing. You're not just some CEO or something or whatever. It's, it's still a job. Everything is still a job no matter what you do. So that's employment. That is the deep, dirty roots of what you can do in poker. There's so much opportunity for you to capitalize but nobody ever gets to the finish line because nobody follows any structures. You're taking your money from your day job and you're going to play and you're doing well. I mean, you're making $600 a night sometimes and you're losing often. You're not following a structure. Follow the structure. That's how you do this. All right, guys. Thank you for again for watching. I know this is a long episode, but this is probably the most informative episode I can ever give you to get your poker career on track. If you want to be a professional poker player and actually make real money, then there you go. Let's say you've, you've followed it all the way through, right? Closing statements. You made $180,000 in cash this year. You paid your 30%. You dropped your $50,000 in cash off or your taxes or whatever. You've made $130,000 in cash. That means you have a $130,000 bankroll. You can start buying in for $10,000 at a time. You can play 1025 now. Consistently. If that game, if you can find it. The game, that game's hard to find. It's not always there. It's like once a month or you have to find it. It's, it's a random game. So it's not the same thing. You become like a contractor at that point. But it, it, it's real. It's real. All right, guys. This is how you do it. Consistently. Forever. You can always keep doing this. Always do not touch your poker money. Keep your day job. Do not touch your money. Start off with a free roll. Win the cash. Go play one, two. If you lose it, go win another free roll. Whatever. Don't touch your money. So when did I play? Handy dandy envelope. I played three, two, 24. I played one, two. And I made 387. <clears throat> that puts my bankroll at $1,457 in five games. I've had four wins, one loss, and zero draws. <sighs> Here we go, guys. All right. So I'll be playing again next week, um, Friday or Saturday. I do not know. Both, possibly, maybe, neither. You never know. I don't know. Thanks for watching the Grinders Challenge. If you want to be a part of this group and you haven't tried to join it yet, I've already given you all the details. Join the group if you want. Do this on your own. You don't have to advertise like I do. I'm just leading the way. Join the Grinders Challenge. It'll change your entire life. I'll teach you everything that you need to know. It's not nothing about being selfish. I'm not trying to, well, I want to be number one. But don't we all? So it's okay. But I'm not going to be selfish and not help you. I'll, treat, I'll train you with everything that you need to know. I'm not going to give you every single one of my strategies because if we ever play against each other, you can't know everything that I do, but I will help you enough along the way to where you can do this forever. Imagine, imagine you would have started off playing a free roll like you normally did and you followed my structure right away. Let's say that this, I followed this structure because somebody was teaching me that this exists and I followed it for 15 years. Where would I be right now? Maybe I'd be a pro on TV. I didn't do it because nobody taught me anything. This is more valuable than you think. There's a lot of ways to make money in this. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go have a very nice cigar. It's a Sunday. It's beautiful outside. And I might go to the casino again. I'm about to check up on the game, see how things are rolling. And uh, I'm either going to go play or uh, chill out, relax, and join my Sunday. All right. Thanks for watching the Grinders Challenge. Episode number seven. Thank you.